Hello and welcome back to Kiro's Workshop. I love burlesque performances. Gorgeous people, doing sexy moves and a lot of crystals here and there. And for some time I thought about doing a burlesque inspired doll. And I thought, hey, why not making this a collab? So I asked two of my BFFs to join me in this task. Jacob from Black Space Dolls and Mason from Mr. Super Customs. For this collab we had a few rules. First one, we had to use Barbie as a canvas to try to keep a more accurate body type. Second, use tons of rhinestones. And third, we also needed to stick with the famous bombshell trio of the brunette, blonde and ginger girls. My pick was the redhead bombshell. And for my inspiration I obviously needed to go with my favorite burlesque performer, Dita Von Tees. I'm telling you, this woman is a definition of perfection. So I've already told you that I needed to use Barbie as a base. But in case you were wondering, mine is a wheelchair Barbie's head on a Barbie extra body, the one with the pink fur coat. I've drawn my initial lines of camera as usual, and I'm beginning with the brows. She's a redhead, but I'm using brown pastel as a base. Like always, with a piece of an eraser cut with an angle, I'm cleaning and defining the shape. And later, with red color pencil, I'm drawing the lips, leaving space for the teeth. I want her eyes to be bright and blue. So first, I'm drawing the edges of the iris with a darker shade. And with brown pencil, I'll draw a line where I want the crease to go. Next, I'm filling the iris with a very light blue. And off camera, I'll start layering the scleras with white. I'll begin working on the makeup. For this, I'm applying a light brown base all over the lid. And then highlight the brow bone with a light beige pastel. To make the eye socket deeper, I'll apply dark brown, but only underneath the grease line that I painted before, trying to blend it well with the rest of the eyeshadow. I'll also apply some on the bottom. And add some color on the rest of the face by applying red blush on the nose, cheeks, and a little bit on the forehead. Now I'm following Jacob's recommendation and I'm using general chalk pastel to fill the scleras and oh my god, this is a miracle. Thank you so much for this tip Jacob, I'm never letting this go. This opacity is amazing. As I've said before, I really enjoy painting the pupils with a darker tone of the iris. And later I'm cleaning up the teeth with white color. I'm now adding some glow on the eyes by mixing blue and white. And with copper metallic paint, I'm cutting the crease. It is kinda subtle, but it looks very pretty. Next, I'm giving the eyes some shadow with black pastel. And add the catch lights. To highlight her skin, I got this holographic nail powder. And I must tell you, I'm using this every single time from now on. The hollow shimmer is very subtle, but in person it looks freaking awesome. I'll apply the lashes of camera, and now I mix some gloss varnish with red extra fine glitter and some of the hollow powder to paint the lips. If you want to add glitter on the lips, I really recommend you to mix it with your glossy varnish. This way, you'll have extra shiny glitter, and most importantly, you encapsulate it and it doesn't fall everywhere. Face done. Time for the outfit. First, I'm making a pair of stockings with black tulle. And then, I'll sew a piece of lace on top. Stockings done. 
I have four of these suspenders that I made with a thin elastic and sewing hooks on one end. I did this to make them removable. I don't know what for, but I mean it would look cute. I'm placing the other end of the hook on top of the stockings and sew it in place. As you can see, my suspender will be able to stretch with the movement of the joints. Once I unfold the lace, it covers the hook very nicely. Next step, I cut her undergarments with a silver stretchy fabric, and now I'm closing them on the sides. Turn them inside out, and try them on our mannequin doll. The overall fit looks great, but to be honest, they were looking kinda long, therefore a little diapery. So with camera, I fixed the size. For the bra, I took two pieces of the same lace from the stockings and gathered the sides, both of them. By gathering the size, now we have a cup that fits perfectly on the chest. I'll do the same for the other side, and then sew them together to have this. A complete, well, almost complete bra. Now I'm taking an extremely thin black ribbon to add the straps, and sew them on place on the bottom. I'm going for a triangle bralette kind of strap. Also, you can see here how the panties look readjusted. Much better in my opinion. Next, I decided to sew a piece of green ribbon on the bottom of the bra. But once I tried on the doll, the ribbon kind of messed up the fit. So at the end I decided to remove it. At the end, I just sewed two pieces of ribbon on each side and add a snap. Time for the good stuff, the rhinestones. First, I applied a thick coat of glue that ended up not working, but who cares about that anyway? And add the crystals one by one. I decided to go with green, because I love the combination, but also, technically, green is the complementary color of red, so yeah, know your color story. Now I'm creating the waistband with green ribbon. But I want it to look pretty, so symmetry come to me. I'm now pinning everything on place. And sew it. I believe the waistband is my favorite part of this ensemble. And once everything is in place, I'll sew the suspenders. Two on the front and two on the back. Once done, I can continue crystallizing the panties. I mixed three colors of rhinestones for this outfit. It's good to play with the colors to create dimension. And actually, we started a friendly, not so friendly competition of who used more rhinestones in their projects. So I'm counting them one by one. And now I'm gluing the rhinestones to the suspenders. While I use more green crystals on the brown and the panties, I decided to use iridescent ones on the suspenders, with some hints of green here and there. You can see how much difference this made. Time to put on the stockings. I really really love the suspenders. What I like about them is that they actually help to keep the stockings in place. And now for the scary part, the hair. I really wanted to achieve this Dita Von hairstyle. And I actually began rerouting the hair. 
but I was like 2% on the process and then I realized that making the hairstyle with the reroot was extremely ambitious. So I decided to mold the form with soft clay. It looked disgusting, I know, but I felt more confident this way. So first I painted the complete thing red. And then apply glue on the parting. And add the hair. I'm helping myself with this hook to flatten the ends and can I tuck them on the parting I made. Try to concentrate the glue in three places, the parting, the middle and the ends. To be honest, this first turn of hair is the only one I recorded, because the complete process took me around 3 hours, including the drying time. I needed to be so careful that I continued going out of focus and frame, so yeah. Sorry for not recording the complete process, but I'm also not sorry. <laughs> As you can see I played with the waves and at the end I cut the hair because I wanted the bottom curl to be precise. So I also used the separation of the bottom to tuck the ends and my hook was very helpful. So fast forward this is the final wig and I'm very proud of it, yes I am. But as you can see the places where I use more glue are very visible, you can see this on the parting and on the back. So, taking advantage of our little crystal game, I decided to cover the glue with more rhinestones. This obviously won't be the solution to cover the glue completely, because I also don't want to overdo it, but at least the attention is not instantly stolen by it. And with this, she's finally done. I decided to name her Scarlet Delight. I am so in love with how she turned out, and I love the theme of this collab also. I like making these sexy, more adult collector dolls. Time for the final group photo. These three girls are ready to give you the show of your lives. I want to thank Mason and Jacob. This was such a cool collaboration. Don't forget to watch their videos. The links to their channels are down in the description box. And well, that's up for today. But as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring, subscribe, and turn on all notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next time. Hero out!